So they answered and said, John the Baptist, but some say Elijah, and, th and others say that one of the old prophets has risen again. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Peter answered and said, The Christ of God. And he strictly warned and commanded them to tell this to no one, saying, The Son of Man must suffer many things, and be rejected by the elders and chief priests and scribes, and be killed and be raised the third day. And glory be to God forever and ever. Amen. Um, in today's Gospel reading, when we see the Lord's asking the questions to the people, uh, and then he asks the disciples in particular, it's a question of focus. Um, the Lord wants us to focus our attentions now. Uh, focus is essential in the spiritual life, uh, especially when facing any tribulations or any difficulties. Without focus, um, one cannot uh, necessarily uh, pass the tribulation and succeed. Uh, this is why focus is essential. Um, I think that when we take tribulations with uh, focus on who the Lord Jesus is, we gain the blessings and the fruits of the journey to heaven with our Lord Jesus. If you notice when the Lord asked them, who do the people say that I am? It was very easy for everyone to answer, uh, different answers according to what they've been hearing from the crowds and the people. But then the Lord said, who do you say that I am? The answer was, you are the Christ of God. In Matthew it says, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Um, the Lord, right away, after hearing that, he spoke of his sufferings. Because uh, at the time there was an understanding of that Messiah that would come, uh, that would live forever, a, a political Messiah, a Messiah that would establish a kingdom on earth. The Lord Jesus wanted to clarify that he's not coming from, for an earthly kingdom or for political uh, uh, peace. He is the Christ, the Messiah of the cross, not a political Messiah. Uh, and that's why he had to speak of his suffering at the end, to clarify that, especially to the disciples. Even though he told them not to speak of it now, but they would speak about it later, when the time came after the redemption. Uh, St. John the Baptist clarified this from the beginning. When the Lord came towards him, he said, Behold the Lamb of God who bears or carries the sins of the world. This is the Messiah, the Christ, who came to carry the sins of the world. The Pharisees, of course, did not understand that, and they said, doesn't the Christ live forever? Uh, it was always a focus on the earthly political rule, and the Lord was here for eternal heavenly rule. Now, the importance of the suffering Messiah. Um, the question tells us, uh, how can I properly follow the Christ of the cross, or the Christ of suffering, or the Messiah of the cross, or the Messiah of suffering, without partaking in his sufferings. Uh, so we glory in tribulations, as St. Peter said, because they produce many great things in us, including hope for eternal life. We spoke about Job, how the Lord is very compassionate and merciful, and the end intended by the Lord was mercy. Um, there are so many beautiful verses. St. Paul speaks in all his letters and focusing his attention on Christ and the cross. Or the Messiah of the cross. For example, in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 2, uh, St. Paul says, For I determined to know nothing, anything, among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. He says that when he came to the brethren, uh, he didn't come with excellence of speech or excellence of wisdom to declare to them the testimony of God, but that he was determined to, know no, to not know anything among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. The focus on the cross. That's why Father Bishoy Campbell and many of the fathers, many of the saints spoke of that many times. That it's a focus on the cross. St. Paul, just before his death, when you read 2 Timothy chapter 1, he says, For this reason I also suffered these things. Speaking of suffering. Uh, Nevertheless, I am not ashamed. For I know whom I have believed, and I am persuaded that he is able to keep what I have committed to him until that day. For St. Paul to be able to suffer, he had to know who he was suffering with and who suffered for him. So he was suffering with Christ because Christ suffered for him. And that kept him not ashamed and he was able to 
continue because he believed and was persuaded until the coming of the Lord, until that day. Uh, St. Paul speaks about our fellowship and the Lord's sufferings in Philippians 3. He says that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being conformed to his death. It's essential, right? There's no resurrection without a cross. Suffering means glory. Though St. Paul said, we suffer with him that we may be glorified together with him. It's a guaranteed promise. Suffering faithfully with Christ and in Christ will grant eternal joy and glory later. St. Paul also speaks about it in Galatians 6. He says, but God forbid that I should glory or boast except in the cross of my Lord Jesus Christ. So if there's anything to glory about, anything to speak about, anything to boast about, anything to, to express or elaborate on, it's the cross of Christ. Because his sufferings lead us to eternal life. Bear the sufferings we're bearing now. The whole world can if it remains focused on Christ on the cross, the love of Christ on the cross. So the Lord Jesus um, is the express image of who God is. People are wondering, where is God? Is God allowing this? Why would God allow good people to suffer? Uh, and there's all these questions about who God is and what are his characteristics. St. Paul explained it very simply in Hebrews chapter 1. He said, God, who at various times and in various ways spoke in time past to the fathers by the prophets, has in these last days spoken to us by his Son, whom he has appointed heir of all things, through whom also he made the worlds, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become so much better than the angels, as he has by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. So the brightness of his glory is Jesus. God is the express, Jesus our Lord is the express image of Christ, of our, of our Lord Jesus Christ. So and say, who is God? Um, instead of wondering about the current events, think about who has been when children and his compassion for the sick that is God when you see the Lord Jesus with the dying and with Lazarus and with mourners that is God when you see the Lord Jesus with the Samaritan woman that is God when you see with and sat with and talked with and had compassion on that is God when you see Jesus with the blind and the lame and his compassion for each and every one of them that is God when you see Jesus with the thief on the cross, that is God. Um, then we understand what St. Paul meant, that he is the express image of his glory. That all these beautiful characteristics, the Lord revealed to us through our Lord Jesus Christ. To under, make us understand who God is, that we may be sure and confident in the midst of tribulation. That's why St. John in his first letter, chapter 1, speaks of that. He says, that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled concerning the word of life, the life was manifested, and we have seen and bear witness and declare to you that eternal life which was with the Father and was manifested to us. That which we have seen and heard we declare to you, that you also may have fellowship with us and with his Son, Jesus Christ. And these things we write to you. that we ever doubt for a second the compassion and mercy of God that the outcome of this tribulation if taken with thanksgiving and trust in God and his love for humanity will reap incredible benefits from glory to glory after all this is said and done but we just have to remain steadfast and trust until that day as St. Paul said that way we will never be ashamed just as St. Paul said, because he knew whom he believed in. So when the Lord Jesus asks you, who am I? Who do you say that I am? Be sure you're able to answer the question. And to be able to answer the question goes hand in hand with trusting Christ through sufferings. That you may know he who loved you and died for you. 
In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Heavenly Father, we praise you and thank you for this day. Thank you for your love. Thank you for being love. As St. John teaches us, grant us and walk faithfully. As Jacob prophesied, that we walk with you. That we do just love mercy. Have mercy on us all, Lord, and all creation. Thank you, Lord, for teaching us and loving us as a loving father with any child he receives. Through the prayers and intercessions of your Holy Mother, St. Mary, King John Michael, St. Peter, and St. Paul. Hear us, Lord, we pray together. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. In Christ Jesus our Lord, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. Wishing you all a wonderful day. God bless you all.